Hi, I'm Naya Gil and I want to be a superhero! And this week, the superpower that I'm trying to get is the power of time. Now, I've been thinking I'd like to be the kind of superhero that swings into action. I'd swing from building to building and arrive at the crime scene so quickly I could catch the baddies super fast. So what does that have to do with time? Well, if I want to get there quickly, it means I have to cover the most distance in the least amount of time. So we need to work out the fastest way to swing, and I think we can find a clue to this problem inside a traditional clock. So if you look in these clocks, there are gears, like on a bicycle, which change the clock hands as they turn. Some clocks have pendulums inside them, and a pendulum is basically a weight on one end of a long straight rod or string. And that swings back and forth like this. Now some clocks have pendulums as part of their machinery and they use the swinging motion to keep the gears turning. They need to swing at exactly the right rhythm so that the clock hands keep turning and the clock measures as accurately as possible when it's measuring time. The swinging pendulum and the moving gears is also what gives a clock it's distinctive tick-tock, tick-tock sound. To be very accurate, a pendulum swing needs to be predictable, which means it needs to swing at the same speed every single time. And when a pendulum swings, it does this by changing the stored energy, which we call the potential energy, into movement, which we call kinetic energy. How much kinetic energy there is affects how much and how fast it can swing. The speed is also related to how far away the weight is from the fixed point at the top of the string or the rod. Let's do an experiment to see how the length of the pendulum affects the swing speed. For this experiment, you will need tape, scissors, three sheets of paper, a pencil, a long straight stick like a skewer, or a wooden spoon handle, and a big lump of blue tack or plasticine to add weight to our pendulum. Start by making three paper straws. You already know how to do this because we've done it so many times, and you're gonna wrap it around your pencil. So roll your strip of paper around the pencil like this, and then tape it in place until you have three separate straws. There we go, now you should have three separate straws. You're gonna cut a small section off one end of each straw, about two centimeters off the end. So we've got three short ends and three long ends. Now you're gonna tape the short sections onto the straw at right angles to the long one to make a little T shape. And these are going to be your rods. Next, you're gonna to need to add some weights or bobs. <laughs> Bob. So divide your plasticine or your blue tack into three equal sized balls. We want the same weight on all of our rods. I think it helps if you turn these into sausage shapes so you can wrap them around your rod. So take your first rod and you're gonna wrap the weight around it evenly towards the top of your rod like this. Take another rod and you want the weight to be at the bottom, like this. And then take your third rod and you want it to be somewhere in between your first one and your second one. Okay, so you should end up with three rods with the weight distributed at three different positions. Now what you need to do is take your long stick and tape it onto the edge of a table. I'm gonna tape mine onto a box so that you can see it here. Okay, thread the three pendulums onto your stick, making sure that there is some distance between them. Okay, so once we've threaded the three pendulums onto the sticky out end of our stick, let's take a look at what happens when we pull them back. So I'm gonna pull them back the same amount like this. And you can see this one swing really fast. Might swing off. What about if I pull this one back? You might be able to see that it's swinging slower. And what about this one that has the weight all the way at the bottom? You can see that it swings even slower than that. This number of swings per second is what we call frequency. 
So let's pull them all back at the same time to see how they compare. So this is the same amount of energy I'm putting in. And let's see how these swings work. Here we go. So you can see that even though they're the same length and they start from the same point, each pendulum has a different amount of stored potential energy and therefore a different amount of kinetic energy. So they all move at different speeds. Now for the moment of truth. And for this, I will need my small stunt woman, Nano Nano Girl. Okay, Nano Nano Girl, we have identified that this straw swings the fastest so let's put you on there and see if I can help you swing into action. Here we go. Okay, hold on tight. Three, two, one. Swing! Are you okay, Nana Nana girl? She says she feels sick. Okay, well, anyway, thanks for helping. I might go get her a nano cookie to help her feel better. See you later.